Alright, so guys, we've got Avi, we've got Papa J, and they're going to debate about vaccines. It's just going to be them. Everyone else, including myself, will be muted. I'll only come in if it's necessary for technical reasons, like someone's mic is acting up or something. And with that, I will unmute them both and let them talk. Hey, how you doing? Hello? Hello? I'm just struggling with the interface here a bit. I'm using my iPhone. Well, you seem to be talking now, so... Okay. Okay, so you disagreed with something uh, about the debate I had um, with uh, Ben. Yeah, that's right. There were two things, but now I'm thinking there's only one. Okay, what's the one? The first thing, the first thing was that um, uh, I I got the impression that that you were. I'm pressing push to talk, and then it's cutting me off, which is <laughs> it's irritating. Um, yeah, I got the impression that you're using the statistical significance. How do you get the impression I was using it? Really, I keep pressing push to talk and it keeps going off. It's very annoying. Um, yeah, I got the impression that the, the statistical was being used to uh, support the hypothesis that vaccines are safe. But I, I've gone through the material again, the, the video again, and, and perhaps you weren't. Perhaps you were just using it to, to bolster the idea that the, the, the data was, was good data. And if, if that's the case, then, then for... Yeah, that, no, that, it's to, just, just to be precise. Um, I'm using statistic. They're saying there's no statistically significant difference to point out the fact that the null hypothesis could not be... So in statistics, the way um, things typically work is that you have a null hypothesis and you don't confirm the null hypothesis. You either reject or fail to reject it. Like in terms of like just basic, really basic statistics, like probability of error. In statistics, um, are you are you familiar with error in statistics, like the types of error that you can have? I I work in data science, um, but at the moment, I, I mean, I do things like Monte Carlo simulations. Um, uh, well, are so you forth. familiar with the types of errors in statistics in hypothesis um, testing? Yeah. I what are the two, what are the types what are the what are the types of errors in hypothesis testing that there are? There's there's two there's two big ones. So what are they? Yeah, haven't done any work um, in statistics. Oh, I thought. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you answered. I thought you told me that you were familiar with the types of errors. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's two types of errors. Yeah, but the que the question. The question was about uh, whether you were using about whether you were using statistics to support the quality of the data, or or to support um, the validity of the argument that vaccines are safe. That that was why I wanted to clarify. Yeah, yeah, from. yeah. So so it's it's the it's the latter, and but it's not in the way you think it is. So I'm not presenting it as a so it is a um, there's a there's a difference. I don't want to get into equivocation in between like um, natural language and statistics, but basically, when we say that there is no statistically significant difference, and we have a sample size that is well powered. So to answer, just to answer your question real quick, it's it's just I am using that that, that uh, argument. I, I'm, I'm pointing out there's no statistically significant difference to bolster my case that vaccines are safe. Now, the way I do that is not the way you think I do that. It seems to be that you think I do that to be that there's a confirmation of a, a hypothesis. Then the hypothesis being that vaccines are safe. It's rather a inability to reject a null hypothesis. 
And the null hypothesis would be that there's no, there's no difference. Um, that rather than we would just expect by chance. Um, so there's now you could have a type, you can have an error, you can have a type two error in which we fail to reject the null hypothesis, even if it's false. But I was trying to make the case that um, the number one, any statistician looking at this would conclude that the data, that it was sufficiently powered. And number two, that even if someone were to argue for a tiny difference that we would get if it was greater powered, that that difference, it would be very questionable how clinically significant that would be. Statistical significance isn't in, invested in confirming null hypotheses. I don't even know what that would mean in statistics to confirm the null hypothesis. I don't know any statistician that like says, here's a test to confirm the null hypothesis. You either reject or fail to reject. But if you have sufficient power and you fail to reject and the methodology is sound, then that that leans me toward the null hypothesis, yes. But the no, the convention of the way the tests are set up is that is not confirmation, it's just you fail to reject it. Do you understand that distinction? Hello? Hello? Technical problems here. Um, yeah, again, I'm, I'm not seeing how the point was on the the information I posted from Nature quite that statistical significance doesn't support um, or deny um, the, the uh, validity of of the hypothesis, and in this case, the hypothesis. Okay, so not not the statistical hypothesis but the hypothesis. are you talking about the null hypothesis or are you talking about um well you know what let's go through your paper can you post the paper in general uh well the uh, the, the post it post your article from nature Do you, do you have it? Yeah, I have it. Just take a minute or two. Uh, I've posted a link in general. Okay, let's walk through it. Okay. 
When was the last time you heard a seminar speaker claim there was no difference between two groups because the difference was statistically non-significant? If your experience matches ours, there's a good chance that this happened at the last talk you attended. We hope that at least someone in the audience was perplexed if, as frequently it happens, a plot or table showed that there actually was a difference. How do statistics so often lead scientists to deny differences that the that those not educated in statistics can plainly see. For several generations, research have been warned statistically non-significant results do not prove the null hypothesis. Yes, this is literally what I just told you, okay, in this nature paper. I said that non-statistic, non-significant results does not prove the null hypothesis. The hypothesis that there is no difference between the groups or no effect of a treatment or some measured outcome. Like, is this not what I literally just told you? nor do statistically significant results prove some other hypothesis. Such misconceptions have famously warped the literature with overstated claims and less famously led to claims of conflicts between studies where none exists. We have some proposals to keep scientists from falling prey. Pervasive problem. Let's be clear nonstop. We should never conclude there's no difference in association just because p-value is larger than a threshold such as 0.05 or equivalently because confidence interval includes zero. Never should we conclude these two studies conflict because we have statistically significant ones that are not. Yes, this is very basic. Yeah, because there could be there could just be a difference in power, even though the point estimate's the same. Like I get that. So what? For example, consider a series of unintended uh, effects in anti-inflammatory drugs because these results were statistically not significant. One researcher concluded the exposure of the drugs was not associated with the onset of atrial fibrillation. No, of course you can have a, an association that's not statistically significant. I get it. Now let's look at actual data. The researchers describing the statistically non-significant results found a ratio of 1.2, 20% greater. Also found that everyone's conference visible, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this ludicrous excludes statistically non-significant results showed no association. Okay, yeah, I get that. These are like, this is like a really basic thing. Okay, I understand this. Therefore, um, blah, blah, blah. We agree. Call for nine. to be abandoned. Okay, uh, where I disagree is that the entire concept of statistical significance should be abandoned. I, I don't think I don't agree with that. I think I think well, here's what I think is still valuable. I think the combination of something not statistically significant in conjunction with the sample size, the power being very high, and the methodology of the study being sound, I think that actually is meaningful. It doesn't mean there's no association. It doesn't mean there's no difference. It just means to me that even if there was a difference that it would probably be very, very, a very, very small difference. That conclusion, I think, assuming all, all everything that was done soundly, assuming the there was no uh, glaring problems in the methodology, the combination of no statistically significant difference with a very large powered study with sound methodology leads me to believe not that there's no difference, but that if there were a difference, it would probably be very small. Now, is there a problem with what I just said right there? Uh, no, I feel like we're still talking at cross points here. Okay, wait, um, wait. No, wait, wait, hold on. Just... Wait, just wait. Just answer the question. Yes or no? Is um, there a problem I, with I, what I'm... I just No, I'm with you. And... Okay, cool. Great. I mean, so then, you know, so wait, I... wait. We, great. we agree so to then, that. So then, with, so then with vaccines, so then with vaccines, you had a very large sample size on my view. Um, it was, I, you had, on my view, it was powered well. And there was no statistically significant difference. And so my conclusion was, if you listen to the whole debate, is that even if there was a difference, even if there was a difference, that difference would probably be very small. Do you disagree with that? Uh, no, I think that's fair to say. Great. So on that basis, that leads that leads support for me for what my criteria of safety is, that vaccines are safe. Is there a problem with that? Uh, yeah, that's like a okay. huge... Go, that's, go, a what's hu the, that, that's a huge leap. Um, what's the leap? What's the leap? The leap is from um, this... this this uh, sample of data is probably um, not bad or misleading to a conclusion about the safety of vaccines. Wait, what's the problem with the sampling of the data? Well, what I'm on, if, if you read 
through the uh, nature article um, wait, as a point. Are we talking about? I, hold on, wait. You made us. You said there's a problem about the sampling of the data of the study I used. Are you familiar with this? Which study I even used in the first place? Uh, no, I didn't say that. I'm saying. What did you say? That I'm saying you can't go. The, the statistics tell you something about the quality of the the the, the sample that you've taken. Yes, they they're telling you yeah. whether this is. Yeah, and and it turn and and. The, the question there's yes i understand there's a question of uh, external validity like how much do things extrapolate that's why generally speaking you want to you want a robust sample size that's representative of different age of different ages that we'd be giving this medication to of different races that we'd be giving this to of uh, for sampled from different areas so we want an area, we want a sample that would extrapolate now in my view that is that sample in my view it is a sample that we would expect to extrapolate well out to others which leads to support that vaccines are safe. Is there a problem with that? Um, I agree with the well, everything until you got to the last statement. So what's the problem? You said vaccines are safe. Yeah, so what's the problem? Uh, it's just that the no amount of, of um, good samples really gets you to that. Conclusion. Okay, great. So if um, you want to, okay, look. So if you, if you want to take the view, because that applies to every medicine. That applies to every every that applies to every action. Uh, yeah, it's you agree, uh, that's you agree a it applies to you agree it applies to every action, right? So like raising uh, yeah. your hand, like look, raising your hand, like I could raise my hand right now. If I, I could do a trial with people who raise their hands in the air for one minute uh, or for five seconds versus people who and randomize them for people who don't raise their hand. And we find we, we, we do a randomized clinical trial on millions of people, let's say. And we find no statistically significant difference and everything was, you know, powered well and everything. There was great methodology and the sample size extrapolated. You would just say that we can't conclude that raising your hand for five seconds is safe. Is that right? Um, I, yeah, I'm probably being pedantic and, you know. Every well, yes time. or no. Can you just answer the question? Yes or no. Can, can we conclude with everything I just said, can we conclude that raising your hand for five seconds is safe? Uh, well, no. <laughs> we can't. Uh, because... Okay, so to be clear, we cannot conclude. We cannot well, conclude that raising your hands for five seconds is safe. Okay. Well, it, I'm well, going to be I, right. Do I... I have, wait, do I have that right? I'm being pedantic here, but all... Do I have all that correct? Yes or no? Uh, can I use my own words with my own mouth? No, you can, well, you you can say yes or without, no. You can, you can say yes or no, and then you can use... You can answer the question, and then you can clarify. Answer the question, and then you can... Do I, do I have... Is what I said correct? That you... That based... So again, just to be clear, we have a randomized controlled trial of, the, of half the planet, let's just say. Half the planet... The population goes through a randomized control trial. It was perfectly conducted. It was su very definitely sufficiently powered. And they were randomized to raise their hand for five seconds, and the other group was a placebo group. <laughs> not no, placebo group, but not raising their hand for five seconds. And there's no statistically significant difference with that sort of power in any adverse health outcome. Can we not conclude that raising your hand for five seconds is safe? Um, we can be very persuaded that it's safe. And at the same time, as with all scientific uh, facts, they're, they're only true until their comes up here. Yeah. Okay. So it's so as, when it's I as say good conclude, as. okay. So when I say conclude, that's that's what. I, yeah, I mean very, very persuaded. I'm obviously yes. I could be in a hallucination. I could be living in the matrix. I, I'm not arguing. When I say we can conclude that vaccines are safe, I'm not taking a view that I'm 100 percent certain that vaccines are safe. I can say like, okay, I'm 99. Like I lean like 99.99, whatever. Um, that's what I mean by conclude. That's what I'm talking about. So given that explanation, can we conclude? that vaccines are safe.
Um, I think I think there's. I, I wouldn't use the term safe, but I would say uh, persuaded that they're not too bad or something like that. Okay, well that's or persuaded okay, well, look, that there's not significant harm. Okay, do you I, take? Let me just ask you this: Is there any? Is there any pharmaceutical that you would conclude is safe? When we no. say, and just to be clear, but to be safe, be safe. We mean, we mean that as far as medications go, like this is generally a, a safe medication has a very, a very low risk of harm. That's what I would. That's how I would put it. By safe, we, I just mean a very low risk of harm. Is there anything? Is there any pharmaceutical that we could conclude based on a study like that, or just uh, at all on your view that there is a safe medication? Uh, yeah, this brings me to the the second topic where wait. I, I, I disagreed. Yeah. And, you know, yes, uh, sir. I, Dude, wait, wait. Oh man, look. Everything like this is just a this is a, I feel like we're getting into semantic debate here. Like, look, when I say a vaccine is safe, and this is cl this is clever. Like, I clarified this in the debate like multiple times. I don't even know why you're bringing this up. Um, if, I don't. You may have not watched the whole debate, but. I'm, I made it very clear that, like, med, as far as medications go, no me, no medication and even no action and no food can be 100% safe. There, there's nothing that comes with a 0% risk chance. There's no action you're going to take that's going to have 0% risk. It's all just a spectrum of risk. And some have higher risk than others. Now, some actions have a very low risk. And what I am saying is that vaccines fall in that action category, getting a vaccine. Now, what's the problem with what I just said based on this study? That vaccines are safe, meaning vaccines fall into the very low risk category. Uh, yeah, I would have to persuade you to, to read um, an article I've written about this. Uh, what is the problem? Can you give me? Can you deliver a problem with what I what with, with my conclusion based on the based on the study that I cited? Because you're the one coming here saying you have a problem. So what is the problem? Um, well, first of all, you're not using the term safe as as is generally yes. Understood. Now, now with no, no, no. I cleared in the beginning of the debate. I was very clear about how I was I was using the term. I I, I very clearly made it. I made it crystal clear that I wasn't saying it's like a hundred percent risk free. I was very clear about that in the debate, and I'm very clear about it now. So again, with the clarity that I've given you, is there a problem with what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I think there's a degree of difference. Great. What's the I, what's the uh, okay? What's what difference of degree do you think there is between what I'm concluding and what you're concluding in risk? Well, well, first of all, I think there is there are actions that are a hundred percent or as close to a hundred percent safe. What's a hundred percent? What is it? What is a one hundred percent safe action? Um, for example, I would say. Uh, a toddler playing with a large, uh, non-toxic uh, plastic ball. That's is, not a hundred percent not safe at all. What are you talking about? What? Okay. What? Uh, we, what are you, you wouldn't saying? Consider that safe. Go. On, I, I wouldn't. Yourself. If your if your standard for safe is is zero percent risk. No, the toddler could like bounce the ball on their head and like get a tr get some kind of abrasion. There's, like there's always a risk. Like, are you say, like when I okay? I, I'm saying if their standard for safe is a hundred percent safety, like as in zero percent risk, that is a zero percent chance that this action will lead to any any harm whatsoever. I would, I don't, I'm not even, I, I don't even know if there is such an action. So I was very clear that that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that there's different degrees of risks as far as different actions go, and within the category of action especially if we're talking about pharmaceutical within the category of actions in general, I would even say that vaccines are very safe. Um, which mean, meaning that they have, they carry a very low risk. And I was clear about what I was very clear about what I meant. Um, so, and I'm very clear now, now, given that I have clarified this, I'll ask again, is there a problem with what I'm saying? Um, I think 
Well, I think you're right. You, and I think you have to clarify because the term safe is, is ambiguous. So uh, given my clarity be, of the ambiguous it, statement, is there a problem with what I've said? Yeah, I think as okay. somebody who gives um, expert advice but should be uh, clearly disclosing uh, risk, you shouldn't use ambiguous terms like so. I, well, I, well, no, no, no. I clarified, again, so I clarified the terminology that I'm using, that I was using. I clarified what I meant by it. You seem to have blown past it and you seem to have but I clarified that I wasn't using it in that sense. So given my clarification, which I've done so far every time I've said it, what is the problem with what I've said? Do we disagree about something? Let me ask you that. Do we disagree on a proposition? Uh, I, I think it's semantics. Uh, okay. I, I agree with you. If, you, right. clari a, if, you, cool. if you clarify, your, if you're happy to clarify your use of the word safe as in not being safe <laughs> oh okay. dude stop that is so dishonest no no okay. no okay no i'm not saying safe means not safe no that is so ridiculous what okay. no okay. By, okay so just to be wait, 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 wait no when i say when i say it's safe i mean that it has a very low risk of harm now if you say something that has a very low risk of harm is something that is not safe then we just have a different understanding of what the word safe is. And I was very yeah. clear. And again, so I was clear what I meant. Like I was clear that, look, if you just have this view that everything is unsafe, you can have that view. It just looks ridiculous because that's going to, if you're going to consider that, if you're going to consider very low risk as not safe, you're just going to have to conclude that everything is not, or virtually everything is not safe. Um, well, I, I think we can you can get quantitative with this to some extent. I, I mean, did get I did get quanti I got very quantitative in the debate. So it's always going to be subjective, yeah. And 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 with vaccines, like, here's the thing. Yes, right? okay. but I was I specified out I specified out the percentages in the debate. So, I, okay. I, I, I I don't know what more clarity I can give. Okay. What, like what Let what more what more do you want? Like honestly, like what. I, okay, look, I was clear that I didn't mean 100% safe. I was, I gave, I gave the percentages. I gave the percentages of different SAEs. I gave the percentages of the different um, AEs. I don't know what you want. And I, and when, and I even gave, and I even gave uh, standards for bars. Like what, what more are you asking for me? I wasn't being unclear at all. I wasn't being unambiguous at all. So if you have a view Again, if my position is just like this with the with the vaccines, if you have a view that is going to suggest that the Gardasil vaccine is not safe, then it follows from that that just about any medication is not safe. Just about any medic or that there is some sort of symmetry breaker between vaccines and other medications that somehow determine the intrinsic safety differences in the way they interact in bodies that determine difference in safety, like some meaningful symmetry breaker. But other than that, you're either going to confirm that you're either going to conclude that just about every pharmaceutical is not safe, or you're going to conclude that the va Gardasil vaccine is safe, or you need to give a meaningful symmetry breaker. Now, what's the problem with what I just said? Okay. Uh, how much as a, as a percent of this conversation would you say was you talking and how much I don't, it, it doesn't matter. I don't, cause here's the thing. Like I, I don't care how, what percentage I'm talking, what percentage you're talking. If you're not going, if you're going to either miss my points, you're going to straw man me or you're going to not answer my question. I'm going to just going to keep asking you the question until you answer it. I don't care what percentage I'm talking and you're talking. It doesn't matter to me. The only what what matters to me like this weird this is weird idea that interruptions are inherently wrong in a debate. That's nonsensical. Like interruption deontology is an insane view that I interruptions are intrinsically a bad thing in a debate. No. Interruptions are bad if they're unjust interruptions, if they're not uh, reasonable. For example, if you were clearly answering my question instead of not answering my question, it would have been 
a bad thing for me to interrupt you. If you were to not straw man me instead of straw manning me, it would be a bad thing for me to interrupt you. However, if you don't track what I say, or if you straw man my position, or if you uh, if you don't answer my question and go off on a ramble, it would be wrong for me to not interrupt you. So I don't care what percentage I'm talking and you're talking. I just want to know what we disagree on, if anything. Okay? What do we disagree on? Am I allowed to ask a question? Uh, sure. After you tell me what we disagree on. Uh, you know what? You could even find it. You can even ask me a question if it's for the purpose of finding out if we disagree on something. Go ahead. Yeah, this, this really does come down to semantics. I, I don't disagree with you, but I think you're not being consistent. What am I inconsistent on? On the one hand, you call something safe. You accept the term safe is ambiguous, and then you keep using it without no, qualification. No, that's false. I didn't do that at all. I, when I called something safe, I was... When I called something safe, I was very clear what I meant. I was clear that what I was and was not talking about. Okay? It was not ambiguous because I gave clarity. Okay. So, so wait, I mean, wait, 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 wait. So what, what's the inconsistency? What, what, am I, what am I being inconsistent on? Right. So you have a better phrase or terminology that's available to you, which is to say very low risk. But that's instead not, of just saying that's not very an low inconsistency. risk, you say... What, uh, what do you take an inconsistency to be? Like, what do you think it is? What do you, when you say inconsistency, what do you think you're actually saying? Here I'm saying that you acknowledge the need to qualify the term safe. Mm -hmm. um, but then you don't... If you, it's like you're saying, well, the term safe isn't good enough. I need to qualify it. And then you keep falling back to the using the I think No, I think, I think it is good enough. The only reason, the only reason I, I... I think if in a conversation with normal people... I wouldn't need to qualify because I think every the, the people would have that common sense understanding. The only reason I qualified it was because I knew. The only reason that debate I qualified it, I think there's nothing wrong with the term. The only reason I qualified it is because I just knew that there would be some idiot, that there would be some sophist who would say, oh, well, guess what? It's not 100% safe. It's only 99.99999999% safe. So therefore, it's not safe on your definition. It's ambiguous. I just knew there would be someone who would do that. And so that's why I qualified it. Okay. And so it turns out I was wrong because that didn't even stop someone like you for doing that. So, yeah, I mean, if it's just semantics at this point, if you don't have anything else to add that we disagree with, I think we're done. Do you have any th disagreement with me? Um... I'm just going to bring you to the third point. Um, I, I agree with what you just oh, said. Yeah, yeah, that's you're a good point. And I, Isaac's, that's bringing out, I, Isaac's pointing out that consistency isn't a semantic issue. It's actually a, it actually is a logical issue. Either you're telling me that I'm having a performative contra. I take look. Here's what I take it to be: either there's a logical contradiction, or there you can demonstrate some sort of performative contradiction. So I'm, I'm performing inconsistent consistently. Can you demonstrate either of those things? Uh, again, I, I want to take you into a process where I ask some questions, but you're not prepared. Sure, sure, but you, no, well, well, no, you, you, you came, to, you requested this debate, and then you said that you have disagreement with me. You, you made a charge, you made a claim, you making a claim that I am inconsistent. Now, what do you take consistency to be? Do you take it anything other than a logical contradiction or a performative contradiction? Again, can I ask, can I start? Do you take, questions? do you, no, not yet. You can after you, you, you're done answering my questions. Do you take, do you take consistency to be anything other than a logical contradiction or a performative contradiction? Inconsistency. I, I, <laughs> I'm not really interested in answering that question. Then why did you make the claim, the white, wait, you were going to make a claim that I'm inconsistent and you're not even interested in answering my question about clarity of what it means when you say I'm inconsistent. I think I made my point already. No, I, I think you haven't clarified what your point even is. When you say consistency, what do you mean? Do you mean anything other than a logical contradiction or a performative contradiction? 
I'll, I'll, this is the third time I'm asking the question. A logical contradiction. Okay, what propositions form the contradiction for me being inconsistent? Uh, again, we're having a discussion. What proposition? Being... You know, you're making a claim that I have a contradiction on my on my. So what propositions on my view? What give me the propositions I am affirming on my view, and then derive the contradiction? It's not a contradiction. You it's... just said it was. Okay, so just Maybe to be clear, got... just to be clear, it, the... now, okay. it now isn't okay. So just to be clear, you so you said I had a contradiction because you said that I had inconsistency, and then you said that by inconsistency you mean it's a contradiction. So, well, it's, so it, it, you're, 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 are you changing your view or are you are you actually contra just contradicting yourself now? I'll put it this way. The contradiction is that you acknowledge that the word safe isn't good enough, but and you need to, and that it okay, actually what means... Okay, so proposition low... one is what? So let's get proposition one on the table. So proposition, proposition one is... Uh, it's what's better. It, the the proposition is it's better not to use the word safe because it's ambiguous. Okay, that's not a proposition I affirm. So, do you have two propositions? Do you have two or more propositions I affirm that derive you can derive a contradiction from? So, we tried one that wasn't actually a proposition that I even held. So, let's try again. What's P one? Could I just be allowed to ask my questions and talk and no, get you, you to not, answer for not, change? Not until not until you defend either defend or retract your claim. So you claimed that I had a logical contradiction. So I'm asking you what propositions form the logical contradiction. Okay, I'm just going to retract um, my point at that. Okay, point. great, great. And so say, I don't have. So we're, then, we're great. So then, so then I don't have a contradiction, man. And now, do I'm going to ask you: Do I have an inconsistency on my hands? Either a logical, either logical contradiction or performative contradiction. Are you going to say that I'm inconsistent? So again, I, I really want to phrase this in my own words and not answer your question. My point is okay, that you've yes, wait, you, wait, finish. Uh, okay. Do I have? I, I want to be clear on what you're attracting. Are you just retracting that I have a logical contradiction, or are you retracting that I am in, uh, I'm inconsistent, that I have an inconsistency on my on my hands, either by a logical contradiction or a performative contradiction? Uh, I think it's neither. Okay, so what do you are you going to say that I'm inconsistent? Uh, I'm going to say that your choice of words is is not um, uh, helpful or or the or the most accurate. Okay, so you're not, are you does that do I t do I t have it right that you're not going to say that I'm inconsistent? You're just going to say something else. It's like this. So, on the, you acknowledge the the word safe. Okay. Yes. Is mis, yes or no? Is okay. Just just we, we, we can get to that, this. But yeah. yes or no? We agree. Do we agree that I don't have that? That do we agree that you have not demonstrated any inconsistency? Uh, yes. Okay. Cool. Great. So, are you retracting the consistency claim? Yeah. It's it, okay. I cool. Worded it wrong. Okay. I, All right. It, so it's, do you? It's not great. Now, do you, but, what's the what's the what's the disagreement? Right. So you've agreed by clarifying the word "safe" that it's ambiguous and it needs no. I no, I haven't. No, I no, I haven't. I think it's. I don't think it's ambiguous. I only think that there are sophists who will try to play on any shred of ambiguity that any word that most people consider unambiguous would also. So people can be sophists on very clear words to try to make some pedantic point. I think that's what you're doing here. I don't think there's anything unambiguous about the way about the word, and I only clarified not because I thought it was ambiguous, but because I knew people like you exist who would make a pedantic point like that. Uh, well, if you look mm -hmm. at the dictionary definition of the word "safe," there, there are mm -hmm. actually two definitions of it. Yeah. Okay. Does one of those definitions of "safe" say zero percent chance of risk? Uh, yeah, pretty much so. Wait, pretty much so? Okay, where does it say 0% chance of risk? No, it's ambiguous too. Safe. Protected from or not exposed to danger or risk. 
not likely to be harmed or lost. Okay. So they. So, so yeah, yeah. So, so there you, you go. Exactly. It's so there's no pro. So I yeah, I take it to be that the way I use the word is very consistent with the dictionary definition, and as properly understood by people who are normal, sane individuals, there's no ambiguity. There's really not a whole lot of ambiguity, especially in the context of the way I used it. So I don't think I said anything, especially in the context of the way I said it, that would be ambiguous if I used the term. The only reason I clarified it was because I I, I know people like you exist. All right. So we do we disagree on anything else? Um, yeah, as long as you're happy to accept that the term is, is ambiguous. Uh, uh, no more right. ambiguous. No more ambiguous than any other word that people don't consider ambiguous. That people uh, typically don't consider I ambiguous in an equivalent context. I think it's ambiguous in a very significant way. Okay. Again, all right. If we're just going to, uh, I'm not really interested in having a debate over what words I should have used. I think it's fine if I clarify what word I should. Uh, and he, and again, my interlocutor, the person I was debating agreed with the way I used that word. So again, so I don't see, I don't see any disagreement. Um, so look. Yep. I agree. Yeah, so, so if, is there anything else that you disagree with me on? Okay, let's say that we want to have a some kind of standard, some kind of quantitative standard for what amounts to safe. Um, where where would you put that? Yeah. So when I look at the action, um, I judge the action by the risks and the benefits. So there's a risk of doing something, and there's a risk of not doing that thing. Um, it's surely safe um, in terms from a medical standpoint if. It's uh, if it is if the ri if the benefits outweigh the risk. So if the be the harm if the benefits protecting one from harm outweigh the intrinsic harm caused by the agent, then it's it's for sure that that would be something I would definitely consider meeting my bar for safety. So for example, if someone is septic with a infection. Uh, and someone is going to be given an antibiotic, and the antibiotic has side effects. However, the infection is going to kill an individual. Um, it's very clear, I think it's very clear in that case, that the benefits outweigh the risks. And the risk, there's a risk, I would just say there's a risk of not taking the medication at that point. And I think that's where we are with Gardasil. Um, with Gar the Gardasil vaccine, I think the risk of not taking it on the population level, especially, is outweighing the risks of it. It's actually more, I, I would say, it's more risky for the population to not take the vaccine than to take the vaccine. Um, but to give you a standard, like I actually gave a standard, I said, like, hey, listen, in the debate, I said, if there was, if there was somewhere around, I'm not giving a exact precise number, but like somewhere in the ballpark of like, you know, you started seeing. Two 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 point five percent SAE rates uh, compared with uh, like SAE difference rates compared with the placebo group. Yeah, I would start getting concerned. Um, now, is that an all encompassing standard? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe there, maybe uh, you can look at uh, AEs. I we can I can have different standards from AEs than SAE, and we can talk about that as well. Um, but the, he couldn't give me any standard. I at least gave him some standards. So I have given you those two criteria. Number one, it's something is for sure safe on my view of the risk of not taking it outweighs the risk of taking it. That seems pretty reasonable. And number two, um, in terms of actions that really have no benefit, um, in terms of actions that in terms of actions that have no benefit within the pharmaceutical context, if the risk is, uh, if there's a risk uh, benefit that is like unclear or something, that it's, it's being used for, it's being used to mitigate risk. Yeah, the, with the, what I gave in the debate was I said, hey, like if there is a, if there's like less than a 2.2, 2.5% difference in SAEs, uh, and ag again, that's a rough number, it's not exact. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with uh, most of what you're saying there. Um, the, I think there's a difference between um, 
the the benefits outweigh the risks and there being uh, no risk or very very low risk or safe well the net the the well if the benefits if the if the there's said there's a you know there, there's difference like between the the prototo and the, the protonto so there's the if the if the net risk of you know there, there's a risk of taking it there's a risk of not taking it but if the risk of not taking it outweighs the risk of taking it, then on the net the action of taking it compared to not taking it is less risky like you're decreasing your risk by taking it uh yeah i agree with that but okay. it doesn't make so, it so, doesn't make what you're doing safe yeah no, well well look i mean <laughs> so if you're saying just to be clear if you're going to use that word to say that an action that you take can decrease your risk is the actions that you take that decrease your risk even if substantially they're not safe. So let's say there was like a zero. Let me give you this hypothetical. Let's say there's a 0.0000001% chance of uh, of a harmful medical thing happening to you by taking this vaccine. And let's say there was a 100% chance that you're going to get an infection and die if you don't take the vaccine, hypothetically. Are you going to say that because there is still that 0.0000001% chance that you get like uh, a medical issue uh, by taking that vaccine, then taking the vaccine can't um, rightfully be called safe. Like that action of getting the vaccine should not rightfully be called safe. Is that, is that your view? Uh, I would say the action of taking the, ac the vaccine would be preferable but I still wouldn't say right. it was you safe. Couldn't, you couldn't call it safe. Okay. So I take that to be crazy. I mean, like, uh, so uh, yeah, this is a semantic debate. I get what you're saying. I understand why. Um, when I use the word safe, I'm using it in a different way than you are. Clearly, if something is, when, when I use the word safe, I, and again, I was very clear in the debate how I meant it. Um, I'm not referring to safe as something that has a 0% chance of risk. Because um, the reason for that is I don't, I think that in action, that reduces your risk of death by 99.9999999% is clearly the safe thing to do. Um, so, and while well, you would say it's not a, sa a safe thing to do, it's just a preferable thing to do. This is, so I'm not really interested in the semantic debate. So is there anything that you disagree with me on? Is there anything of substance of content that you disagree with me on? Um, again, it, it, my, my, uh... My if, there, if the answer is no, semantic. like if just just okay, cool. If the answer is no, just save me the time so I can bail and just say yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, um, okay. Take care. Yeah, it it it's subjective though. Yeah. Cool. Like 